Hypersensitivity reactions are exaggerated or inappropriate immune response to a benign antigen. It is the immune response and not the antigen that is actually harmful. An external antigen such as a drug, pollen, or food can elicit an inappropriate immune response. However, an inappropriate immune response to an internal antigen, such as your own skin or neuron, would be called an autoimmune reaction. Hypersensitivity reactions can be the mechanism of diseases in some autoimmune reactions. Hypersensitivity reactions are antigen-specific. It's antigen specific because the immune system is educated and primed towards the antigen after the first exposure. In this quick example, first exposure or first contact to an external antigen, such as a drug, pollen, or food, causes the immune system to sensitize itself towards the particular antigen. In other words, it primes the immune system against that antigen so when the next time the antigen comes along, the primed immune system, including the T cells, antibodies, and neutrophils, they can mount an exaggerated and an inappropriate immune response, aka a hypersensitivity reaction. But the immune system can cause hypersensitivity reactions in different ways. And that is why hypersensitivity reactions can be subdivided into four main types. Type 1, type 2, and 3 hypersensitivity reactions are antibody-mediated, whereas type 4 is a cell-mediated hypersensitivity reaction. Now let's talk about hypersensitivity type 2 reactions, also known as cytotoxic reactions, in where antibodies produced, they bind directly onto antigens on the surface of plasma membranes and then activate the complement response, the complement proteins. Complement proteins essentially are circulating proteins that when activated lead to an inflammatory response against a particular target. Hypersensitivity type 2 is an antibody mediated response against an antigen on the surface of cell membranes. Now this antigen can be, for example, a particular drug such as penicillin, hydrochlorothiazides and quinines, which in rare cases can be found on the surface of red blood cells and platelets. Another example of an antigen could be part of a bacteria Another antigen could be the rhesus antigen, where a rhesus negative person will mount an antibody response against a rhesus positive red blood cell. All of the antibodies produced against these antigens will then activate complement systems. Please note that all these antigens will be found on the surface of a particular cell membrane or plasma membrane. In order to form antibodies in the first place, there must be first contact of the antigen with the immune system. Here, the antigen presenting cell will pick up the antigen, and it can be any one of those we mentioned earlier. The antigen presenting cell will process and present the antigen then on its surface. The antigen presenting cell will travel to nearby lymph nodes where they will interact with naive T helper cells. Some naive T helper cells will be able to bind onto the antigen presented by the antigen presenting cell. When this happens, the antigen presenting cell will be able to activate the T cell. The activated T helper cell will then activate specific B cells. The activated B cell will become plasma cells and during the whole process they will undergo class switching where they change the class of their antibodies. So for example, here, from a immunoglobulin D, IgD antibody, it will become an IgG or IgM secreting plasma cell. Plasma cells are the cells which produce antibodies, and the antibodies will only target the specific antigen. IgG, 
is a single monomer that circulates in the bloodstream. And IgM is a pentamer, five antibodies bound together, and is usually the first antibody produced against an antigen. Both IgG and IgM immunoglobulins can activate the complement system. The basic structure of an antibody involves inner heavy chains and outer light chains. The areas here are the FAB region, which is the antigen binding fragment region that binds two antigens. And the bottom part here is the FC region, also known as the fragment crystallizable region. Now this region actually are able to bind to certain receptors and the FC region is the region that is responsible for activating the complement proteins uh, and we will soon see how. Again, the FAB region binds to specific antigens. Examples of hypersensitivity type 2 reactions involve, for example, an IgG antibody produced against the antibiotic penicillin. Now, penicillins are able to bind sometimes onto the surface of red blood cells. On the rare chance, IgG penicillin antibodies binds to the penicillins via the FAB region on the cell's surface. Once bound, the IgG antibodies activates complement via its FC region. Complement activation leads to four main things. Number one, it increases inflammatory mediators and thus inflammatory response. Number two, it causes opsonization on membrane surface, leading to phagocytosis. Number three, complement proteins form the membrane attack complex, which causes essentially the cell to lyse. And finally, number four, complement proteins can activate natural killer cells, which will cause uh, the natural killer cell to kill that particular cell. Thus, in this scenario, complement activation leads to the red blood cell death or hemolysis, resulting in anemia. Complement activation is a bit more complicated and involves a number of steps. In hypersensitivity, the classical pathway of complement activation occurs. In the classical pathway, using the same scenario of the red blood cell, what happens again is IgG or IgM antibodies recognize an antigen on the membrane surface of a cell via its FAB region. The FC region of the antibody acts as a bridge for the classical complement activation pathway. Now normally complement proteins are inactive as they circulate in the body, but when cleaved, the complement proteins are activated. In the classical pathway, the first important product formed by the activation of some complement proteins um, is C3 convertase, which is an enzyme. C3 convertase is formed and bound to the membrane surface, and its function is to cleave and activate C3, complement 3, to become C3A and C3B. C3A and C3B are active forms of complement 3, and they do separate things. C3A is an inflammatory mediator, promoting the inflammatory response. C3B opsonizes membrane surface, so it attaches to the membrane surface of the cell. For example, the red blood cell in this case. The opsonized red blood cell is recognized by phagocytes such as neutrophils and macrophages via complement receptors. And thus, it causes phagocytosis and destruction of the red blood cell. C3B, interestingly, can also bind to C3 convertase to form C5 convertase, another en enzyme. And if you haven't guessed it, C5 convertase cleaves and activates complement 5, C5, to become C5A and C5B, 
C5A and C5B have different functions. C5A is an inflammatory mediator. So C3A and C5A essentially increases vascular permeability, allowing complement proteins to enter the inflamed area, as well as allowing phagocytes to enter the area and help engulf opsonized cells, as we have talked about. C5B initiates formation of the membrane attack complex, known as MAC for short. C5B binds with C6, C7, and C8 complement proteins, which allow formation of a channel via complement 9 proteins. This whole structure is the membrane attack complex, and what it does is that it causes fluids, it allows fluids to rush inside the cell, causing the cell to lyse. So the membrane attack complex causes lysis of the cell. The complement proteins also, mentioned before, activate natural killer cells. Another example of hypersensitivity type 2 uh, is where IgG or IgM antibodies against quinines uh, quinines occur. can attach onto the platelet surface. Platelets are molecules important in forming plugs to stop bleeding normally. Now, antibodies against quinines bind to the quinine on the surface of platelets. Bound IgG or IgM antibodies activates complement via the FC region of the antibodies, as we've discussed. When this happens, you get opsonization and macrophages attacking the platelets and then you also get lysis of the platelets via the membrane attack complex. All of this will lead to thrombocytopenia which is essentially low number of platelets in the blood. Now IgM antibodies against mycoplasma pneumonia may also form in an acute setting um, a hypersensitivity type 2 reaction. Interestingly, in cold temperatures, these antibodies can cross-react with the person's own red blood cells, leading to complement activation and hemolysis, causing anemia. Another example of hypersensitivity type 2 are antibodies produced during pregnancy. Here is a rhesus-positive fetus, a fetus with a rhesus antigen on the red blood cell. And in this scenario, this is the second pregnancy of a rhesus positive fetus in a rhesus negative mother. Because this is the second pregnancy, the mother may have already created IgG antibodies against the rhesus antigen from the first pregnancy, which means that the rhesus antibodies produced by the mother can cross the placenta and into the fetus's circulation, attaching onto the red blood cells of the fetus and causing hemolysis in the fetus. Finally, antibodies formed against the M protein of Streptococcus pyogenes, also known as group A Streptococcus, can actually cross-react with cardiac tissues. Cross-reaction of the antibodies activates the complement system, leading to a serious complication of strep pyogenes infection called um, rheumatic heart disease. And this is another example of a hypersensitivity type 2 reaction.